Hello fellow YouTubers, this is Bill McFadden from Tone Pure Music. And in this video, we're going to get a little bit into how to enter in the data to Sibelius for a queue and then export it as a MIDI file and incorporate it into your DAW to play. So the queue that we're, we've been working on in part one is the Imperial March, the Darth Vader theme, and it sounds like this. So that's the first eight measures, and the, the next thing we'll take a look at is the Sibelius score. And so I've keyed in, there's the first four measures, and then actually the first six. And then here's the seven and an eighth measure. Now, if you'll notice the instrumentation, we have horns, actually, to go to the first page, we have horns one and two, horns three and four, trumpets one and two, trumpets three, as well as trombones one and two, bass trombone, no tuba yet, timpani, uh, snare drums, bass drum and cymbals, that's our percussion, and then our strings, we have violin one, two, as well as viola, cello, and bass. So, and that is all, those are all the instruments used in the first eight measures. Now, if we take a look at measures 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, in the original score, we see that John Williams has added flutes 1, 2, and 3, um, as well as, there's actually no oboes, although there will be, clarinets, no bassoons yet, and the horns are resting, and then he has the, the same trumpets, one, two, and three, the same trombones, one and two, the bass trombone as well, no tuba yet, and timpani, and he's added a new instrument that we don't have, and that's a triangle, and, uh, and then here we're continuing on with the snare, okay? So, and no harp yet, no celeste yet. And then of course the strings. So based on the previous instrumentation, we need to add a triangle in the percussion. And we also need to add some woodwinds. We need to add the flutes and the clarinets. And for now, since there's no clarinet two yet, I'll just go ahead and add clarinet one and I'll add uh, two flute tracks. So the way we do that in Sibelius is we go to the home page and then you go to add a remove. And we'll go ahead and add the flutes. So I'll go ahead and type in flute for a search. There it is. Okay, and then I'll add the score. And then I'll click it again. So now we have, basically we'll have flutes one and two on one stave and flutes three, flute three on the other. So as we look at our score, now we've added the flutes in. And we also, <clears throat> if you remember, we have flutes, and then we have clarin clarinet, the B-flat clarinet, and also we have the triangle. So, in the percussion that's added. And the timpani is already going, here's your snares. So, let's go ahead and add in the clarinet, so you do the same thing. Add a remove, key in clarinet, and we want the one in B-flat if it's not specified it's in B flat and at the same time we'll go ahead and see if we can find a triangle and there it is 
add that to the score as well. And it automatically puts it in the correct order for score order. So if you've noticed, the triangle went in with the other percussion and the clarinet went in with the uh, woodwind section. Okay, so now in our score, we have the clarinet showing, we have already have the two flutes, and I'll go ahead and enable, lab, label this uh, flute one, two, and this is flute three. So go ahead and do that. And we have the clarinet, and then if we look at the percussion, we see how we have the triangle. So the next step is going in and keying in the actual notes. So as you see, in the flutes, we have a 16th note triplet followed by an eighth note, staccato. And that same pattern occurs, actually the same notes occur in flutes one, two, and three. So this stave, you're, you've got two flutes playing and the stave one, ideally. And uh, it looks like they're playing the same notes in, in each of the staves. So we could start keying in that data. Then as we look at the clarinets, we have the 16th note triplets notes. We have the same pattern. And that will make it easy as you will find, as you will see in Sibelius because we're using the same rhythmic pattern in all of these instances here. And then in the, the trumpets, the trombones, and the bass trombone have the melody here. And so we have a quarter note followed by a dotted eighth, another and a sixteenth, another quarter note, and then another dotted <clears throat> eighth followed by a sixteenth. And then we have two sixteenths followed by an eighth. So we have this rhythmic pattern. So if you look at it, we have a rhythmic pattern here, a slightly different one here. And then this rhythmic pattern is really the same rhythmic pattern we have in this measure. And then we have a different rhythmic pattern here. And the nice thing about it is you notice all of the instruments are playing the same notes with the exception of the bass trombone be an octave lower. And uh, so we can go ahead and key in one line and then cut and paste and then possibly shift or shift the octave when we get down to the bass trombone, as you'll see. And then we have the timpani, which is a continuation of the same pattern we saw in the previous eight measures. So we can actually use probably that measure exists and we can just copy and paste it there. And the same thing, it looks like uh, we have a similar pattern, but we'll have to look at that a little more closely when we get to it. And then the violins, they're, going, they're having a similar rhythmic pattern going on. These notes might be changing a little bit here, but again, you have the same kind of rhythmic pattern. And so as you can see, it's quite a lot of work to key these things in. But let's just get, to give you an idea, let's go ahead and take a look at the flutes. Okay, so I'm going to go back to the original Sibelius score. And the flutes are starting in, well, let me show you. The flutes are actually starting in measure nine. That's where the woodwinds start to come in. As we go down on the original score, we see we've got 9, 10, 11, and 12. So we're just going to do this one page. So let's go ahead and start with the flutes. And there's a little trick, because we have that uh, triplet 16th, and notice it's occurring in the score in several places. We have a, a triplet followed by an eighth note in some places. Now we could do it from scratch, just type in the the triplet. As a matter of fact, maybe I'll do that the first time just to show you how that works. So let's go to Okay, we've got this crunched up a little bit. Okay, so that 
made a little easier. So here we have measure nine, and we have the flute. So I'll go ahead and uh, first thing I'll do is zoom in a little bit. And then I'll go to the, in Sibelius, I'll go to view and go to the keypad. And what that does is it gives you this little keypad with your different note values. And I'll go ahead and click on a quarter note, which is right here. And that gives you, breaks it down into two quarter notes with a half note rest, two quarter note rests. And then with this quarter note, I can go ahead and, I'll go ahead and type on the 16th. So there's a 16th note because we have 16th note triplets. Then I'll go to the, um, note input menu. And notice we have a triplet thing here, so I'll click on that, go triplet, and there we have uh, three sixteenth notes. They're empty right now, no value. And then the flute, okay, if we take a look at the score, this is what we have. So there's a G, an F sharp, and a G, and then we have this note way up here. So it's probably an octave higher than the G, so it's a G up above. So if I click on this and then go I actually typed the uh, G. You may be able to see from the camera. Yeah, you can see from the camera. And then the next note is a G an octave lower. So I'll click on the next note. Whoops, got too many things going on there. So actually another thing you can do is just move the note up where you want it. Once you have a note in there, so I think I'll do that at this point. So there we have our G's. And then after that, and I'll use this little right arrow. And then we go to the F sharp. And then the next note, which is the eighth note, is a, a G. Now, if you compare that with what we had, so you have the, the G and then the, the G an octave lower, F sharp, and G. And notice that same pattern is close. It's, it's the same rhythmic pattern, but different notes. And so what you can do in Sibelius is you can copy that measure. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the measure, Command C, Command Paste. So I've duplicated the measure. Now what I'm gonna do because it's the same rhythmic pattern, right? But the notes, as you see, the G went down two notes to an E and then an E below that and then a D sharp and an E. So I'm gonna click on the first note and then there's this thing called re-input pitches. And so I can go ahead and re-input the new pitches. So instead of a G, I'm going to an E. Then I go down an E, an octave down an E. And then after the E, we go to D sharp. Okay, I have to get back and... Actually, okay, switching windows messed it up a little bit. So let's try it. There's the an octave lower, G sharp, and then E. 
I believe that's what it was. Now, if I notice I have an E flat instead of an E sharp, if I click on the E, get its attention, and then hit return, that'll change it to the sharp. So now if we take a look at what we've got, we have the E to the E, a locked up lower, and then D sharp, and then the E again. And then we see the pattern, the same pattern, and this time we have a B flat down to a B flat, down to an A, down to an E. So we can do the same thing. I can select that measure, copy it, paste it, and then use the re-input pitches. And this time, as we look down, we've got B flat to B flat, A, B flat. So I'll do it. Whoops. We just, okay. So here we go. B flat. I thought it was working. Here we go. Reput input pitches. Okay, B flat to B flat to A to B flat. And now if we compare that, notice we have the same thing. Now in the the next measure, which would be measure twelve, we have the B flat to B flat A, B flat in B1, B2 is a rest, B3, we have G down to G, F sharp, G, and then we go D down to D, and then C sharp, D. So what I'll do is just copy these four notes here. So I'm going to select the first one, hit shift, that lets me select just four of them, copy. Then I'll go ahead and uh, paste after selecting on the whole note rest in measure 12. Then I'll paste at B3. And I think we had one at B4. So I just have the rhythmic pattern. I don't actually have the notes yet. So notice we have the same rhythmic pattern now the 3 16th triplets, followed by eighth note, and then a rest, and then two of them again. So it's basically the pattern with um, B flat to B flat, A, B flat, and then G to G, and then C sharp back to G, and then D to D, and then C sharp, which is a half step lower. So it's really the same pattern that he's using. In all cases, he's going down an octave, down a half, half step, and then up, back up. So, so the first one starts with B flat. So I'm going to select the first one, and then I'll go ahead and do re-input pitches. And I'll start with the B flat. Oh, actually, that was the same. That the, this first pattern was the same we had here. So where it changes in, is in the third beat, we go G. Okay, so I'll select on, select that note, do re-input pitches, and then go G, an octave down, G, half step down, half step back up, back to the G. And then the last one was D, so I'll go re-input pitches. So D, down an octave, down a half step, up a half step. So if we compare, we have the B flat to the A to the B flat, then we have the G to the G to the C, or the F sharp to the G, and then the D to the D to the C sharp to the D. So it looks like we've got it. Okay, so there's our woodwind part with the flute. And if you look at the original score, once you've done that, notice that flute three is the same notes, okay, which makes sense. You wouldn't want to have a different set of notes unless they harmonize or are off by a major minor third or possibly a six or something. So what I can do in measures nine through 12 is just go ahead and copy 
So I select that measure, then I'll go ahead and shift, select that measure, command copy, and then for flute two, I'll go ahead and paste. Okay, so this is actually flute one and two, and this is flute three. So then we have the same kind of thing going on with the clarinet. We have this same rhythmic pattern that we actually had in the flutes. Okay, and he does that a lot. The instruments are, a lot of the instruments will be doing the same rhythmic pattern and then other, as you see, the trumpets are doing the solo, which is a different rhythmic pattern. So, and if you notice here in measure 11, we have this octave down, half step, and then back up. And then you have the same notes here, and then you're going down from A in octave, half step down and half step up. And then E down an octave, half step down, half step up. So, and if you notice, this measure has the same rhythmic pattern as that. So what we can do is copy this rhythmic pattern, paste it here, and just type in the different notes. Now, when you're doing clarinet, clarinet is a B-flat instrument, so everything you see is actually transposed down, since it's a B-flat clarinet, two half steps. So when I see an A on the clarinet, that would actually be a G in the concert score. So when you're inputting the data, you have to input it in concert score. Now, right now, in Sibelius, oh, by the way, Another good thing, once you've made some changes in a score, good idea to save it. So I'll go ahead and save. And then what I usually do is create a new copy, save as, this one was H. So I'll, I just go alphabetically until I run out of letters and then I start with another scheme. But usually A through Z gets it most of the time. Now, so in Sibelius, if you go home, notice it's got transposing score. So notice the horns. You have a D in the horn. If I click off transposing score, then the D chant goes down to a, a G, okay? So it's good to keep it a transposing score. That will, because the score that we have from John Williams is a transposing score. And I'll show you the significance of that. Let's go ahead and key in the first three notes for the clarinet in measure nine. So it's this same rhythmic pattern. It's the 16th note triplet followed by an eighth. So I'll go ahead and take this rhythmic pattern in this measure from the flutes, copy it, paste it in the clarinet, and it doesn't really matter, you know, what the notes are because we're going to just rewrite the notes. And if I go command, <clears throat> the red means that your note is out of most ranges for most clarinetists. So I'll go ahead and command. It'll bring it down so it's easier to see what we've got. Okay, then I'll click on it. Okay, now this is what we're going to be typing in. So basically, A, A, G sharp, A. So I'll go ahead and click on it. Re input pitches. So I have to go to note input. So now remember, A is really G. So you have to, because it's transposed, so you go down a half step or sorry, whole step. So A, A, G sharp, A would be G, G, F sharp, G. So I'm gonna type in, actually, let's get the keyboard showing so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So watch as I Type in G, G, F sharp, G. And I did it an octave lower. So what I'll do is select that measure and command up arrow. 
And there we have it. So notice, I actually was typing in GG, all right? F-sharp G, but what we got was what John Williams has in the score, A, D-sharp, A. So you have to do that for transposing instruments, okay? Which is not too bad. And then the next one we have is uh, FF, E-sharp, F. So if I were to take this measure, copy it, and paste it, and... Uh, Suppose I just do the down arrow. So notice I have FF, E sharp F. So that was an easy fix there. I just transposed it down. Then he goes into this octave, down an octave, down a half step, down a half step, up a half step pattern. But it has the same rhythmic pattern. So I'll just take this measure, copy it, paste it. And then I'll do the, uh, I'll select the first note, do the re-input pitches. But again, remember, I have to keep in mind that we're doing a transpose. So for the clarinet, it's C, down, C, down, half step, up a half step. So C transposes down to a B flat. So, so here goes, B flat, down and up. Okay, let's see if it looks the same. So you have the C, then the C, then the B, and the C. So it's working. And we don't really need the naturals in here because we want to have the score look pretty much the same. We're not doing uh, slurs at this point, and we're not doing... Um, okay, so there's the natural. So if I click on that, it goes away. There's a natural, so there we go. And I can click on that as well. Actually, maybe I should keep that in because we're in the we've got two sharps. So what I'll do is Control Z. There. Okay. So we actually are doing C natural as opposed to C sharp. I was thinking we were in the key of C like we were were for flutes. So that's the other thing. When you transpose down, you're also changing keys. Notice the horns, where we have one sharp, right? So we're in the key of G there, key of D there, key of C here. Okay, so you get an idea of, well, actually we're on a transposing instrument, and that's good to uh, spend a little bit of time with thinking about transposing, and clarinets are down a step from the concert key. And notice, now, if we can look at this measure here, now the reason they didn't have the naturals in their score is because they put it, if you see the, the clarinet, they have it in the key of C and they just wrote in all the accidentals. So Sibelius was smart enough to know, okay, it's quicker if you just use two sharps. Of course, I don't know if that's such a smart thing or not. But they're, they're equivalent notes because here it's understood we have half sharp and C sharp. So anyway, this pattern is the same as this. And then, um, so we're going from C to C, transpose, right? And then we're going to A to A, transpose, and then finally E to E, and then transposing it down a half step. So, we've already done the, the C, so we can copy that and paste it. Copy, Command C, paste. Now, another thing I could do is change this key signature to the same key signature as the score, and so it would look the same. And actually, I'm sort of tending to want to do that. So the way you can do that is click on it, click on the uh, key signature, or the actually, the problem is you have to do it throughout, throughout the score. So let's just leave it as is for now. Now in measure 12, 
<clears throat> we also have the same pattern. I'll copy it and then I'll paste it there and also in beat four of the measure. And then we'll change the notes. So we're going. So on beat three and four, we do the A down to A, and then we do the E down to E, and of course we have to transpose it. So let's start with the A down to A. So I'll go re-input pitches, and remember A becomes G. So I'm going down an octave, and then down a half step, up a half step. And then after the, uh, the A, then we go to E, and if we transpose that, it's really D, so D, down D, down a half step, up a half step. And so if we look at what we've got, it looks like we have the same thing, which we should have, right? So the thing that really looks different is, uh, are these two figures here because he has it in C, and we have it in the key of D with two sharps. So, so there we've done the uh, clarinet. Then we have the horns, and the horns is another transposing instrument. Actually, I, if we look at the score, I believe they had, the horns were resting. So yeah, the horns are resting. But what we have is just really one line for the trumpets, trombones, and bass trombones. So, and then after we've done that, then we have the percussion yet to do, the triangle, which uh, is right here. Really, there's just one measure for the triangle. And then we have the strings, and they'll be similar to the strings we, we did before. So, in the next tutorial, we'll go ahead and finish We've done the flutes, clarinets, so we'll do the uh, trumpets, which is also a transposing instrument. Same as the clarinets, B-flat trumpet, B-flat clarinet. So you do the same thing. And then uh, after we've done the trumpets, we'll do the trombones, the bass trombones, and uh, the timpanies, which will probably be very similar to, we can probably use so, some of the same measures we had in the previous Sibelius score. And the same is true with the percussion. And also there will be some cutting and pasting we can do with the violins, violas, uh, cellos, and basses. So this is Bill McFadden. It's really a tutorial on how to get your, your notation in Sibelius. And then from there we will export that Sibelius file and import it into our DAW, then add the instruments in our DAW. In particular, we'll be adding the flute, clarinet, and the triangle. And then we'll go ahead and sort of balance it. The template's already been set up for the strings and most of the percussion and most of the brass. So we're really only gonna have, actually have to add flutes and uh, a clarinet <clears throat> in our orchestral template in the DAW. So this is Bill McFadden. If you like this vid video, please click like. If you wish to subscribe to this channel, please subscribe and uh, be notified of any upcoming videos. So this is Bill McFadden from Tone Pure Music signing off. <laughs>